Gary Chalk, thank you for being with us today, It's my pleasure. It's been five years since you first started playing Colonel Chekhov. Did you have any idea that this character would go on this long? No. I had no idea whatsoever. All I knew was that uh, I was coming in one day to, to, or one week to, to play this Russian guy, and it sort of came out of the blue from, uh, from uh, Michael Greenberg and uh, John Smith, and said, come and play this Russian. Oh, well, by the way, do you speak Russian? And I said, no. No matter, you'll learn. <laughs> so they got me a Russian coach. Oh, excellent. Named Sasha. And Sasha? Sasha. Sasha. Was his, his name is Alexander. He played one of the Russian s soldiers. Remember when they went to the, through the gate and they all got killed? Yes. He played one of those guys. Oh, Alexander, okay. I keep thinking it's Bunyan or Bakunyan or okay. something like that. I can't remember the last name. I think it's Bunyan. I'm not sure. But he's a Russian actor from Moscow. Okay. Good guy. Anyway, he came and coached me Russian. So I had this whole scene to do in Russian. In the language, not the accent. In the language. Right. So I learned this scene for weeks. I'm getting all the, the pronunciation just perfect. Everything is right. I get to the day when we're shooting that particular Russian scene. And he says, ah, geez, oh, no. we're pressed for time. We just need the last two lines of the scene, the last three lines of the Russian scene before you go into the English scene. And I said, the hell with that. I, <laughs> I studied this for weeks. I want to do it. He said, well, you can do it, but we have to cut it. Yeah. And uh, so that was very funny. That was Peter, uh, Peter Deloise, Deloise, who was directing that one. <laughs> that was the first one. I remember that. <laughs> and then since then, I've uh, gone on and did uh, several other scenes and, uh, or several other uh, episodes and uh, finally got command of my own spaceship. The which Korolev. Was the Korolev, which is really cool. And saying all those those Russian things because everybody in there is Russian, right? Right. And they all speak Russian. I mean, right. for real, speak Russian. Okay. They're Russian actors. Okay. So uh, I was uh, pressed to get that that accent and the and the delivery right because they'd go, <laughs> <laughs> you know, who you think you are? <laughs> that's, that's what that's what they do, you know. So <laughs> why couldn't we get a real Russian? You know, we have Russians here. I said, well, anyway. But uh, so it went on from there, and then they kept bringing me back, and I'm going, well, this is kind of cool. Because um, right from the very beginning of the series, like I had, I had worked with, with Michael Greenberg and, and uh, Richard Dean way back when in the MacGyver days, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in right. 1985 or 86, somewhere around there. And um, so we'd, we'd had uh, a... Uh, quite a good relationship and I had a great relationship with John Smith that went back to 81 or 82 good guy. from the beachcombers <coughs> and uh, they said oh yeah yeah no we're gonna we're gonna have you on the show and a few years went by nothing nothing not even an audition nothing and all of a sudden I got the call and it was for Russian and then they said, they said I told you we'd, we'd bring you and I said okay but um, I've had a really, really good time and since become good pals with a lot of the cast. Uh, Chris Judge. Michael. Who play, yeah, play golf with him every once in a while. <laughs> Chris. And, and he's, he's a good golfer. Yes, he is. He's a hammerer. I have a, 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 a funny thing of, of him and I one day, we were playing at this golf course called Northlands. And I said, okay, hit the ball. Over the stump, hit the sidewalk, get some sidewalk, hit the rock, bounce onto the fairway, sandwich to the green, putt in for eagle. So I got up, I hit the ball, bump, 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 went onto the fairway. Chris gets up, he does the exact same thing. Hits it over the stump, hits the sidewalk, hits the rock, comes down on the fairway. We both hit sandwiches to the to the green, and both of us eagled the hole. <laughs> Oh my now, God. how weird is that? <laughs> the 17th hole at Northlands. That was no wonder you guys like to golf with each other. <laughs> oh, no, I, I do. Like, I haven't golfed with him for a while because he's been sort of tied up in the series. Yeah. And, but uh, I, uh, I really, I like them. I like them all. Mm -hmm. Amanda, just a doll. And mm -hmm. Michael and Richard, of course, is the, the great guy. And Don and I go back all the way to uh, MacGyver as well. Right. And... Uh, and the new cast are, are really, really fun. 
I really like those. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mr. Bridges. Ben Browder and Bo Bridges. Ben Browder. Ben Browder. What a cool guy. What a, a, just the nicest guy. I mean, you, sometimes you think of these guys, you go, I uh, wonder what yeah. he's going to be like. He's exactly. going to be like, yeah. But he turns out just down home guy. And uh, Mr. Bridges, down home guy. They're all great. So uh, it's uh, the, the thing I like about about that show is that it's such a such a close knit group of people. I it's mean, they've all been working together for so long. And the same producers and same uh, directors and whatnot. So it's really fun to go in there and you just have a good time. In the five, four or five years that you've been on the show, you've done nine episodes now. Nine episodes, yeah. That's a lot of work in terms of, for a sci-fi series like this, you know, like Garwin Sanford only done three in six years. Which one do you highlight as your favorite? Uh, my favorite one is the one where um, My favorite one is the one where we're, it, it was a clip show. Mm -hmm. The clip show with... Um, Disclosure. Disclosure, that was the one. Because they had all the different nationalities and we're sitting around the table, yeah, I can have the little things going. I like that one because that's the first time I got to meet the, the alien guy. Thor. Th Thor? Yeah, yeah Thor. That's an eerie experience, <laughs> I'll tell you that. Because... because he looks so real. Uh -huh. And when you feel him, you go, hmm, he feels alien. <laughs> and he's all made out of like uh, silicone or something. But when he starts talking to you, you're going, this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> OK, hello, Mr. Alien. It's, it's, uh, it's quite something. So I enjoyed that. I, uh, that was one of my favorites, yeah. OK. Chekhov's original purpose was basically basically as a thorn in the SGC side originally. Yes. But later on, he more or less became an ally. Um, but to, to push the Russians' involvement, did you ever find yourself sympathizing from his, uh, from the direction that he was coming from? For who? Uh, Chekhov. Chekhov. Of course, because it's, it's, we have this, this operational Stargate in, in Russia, and the Americans don't want us to use it. Yeah. And they won't let us get, you know, won't give us the equipment. Or they, they threaten us with all kinds of sanctions. So, well, what gives you the God-given yeah. right to have your own Stargate? And when we have one, we can't use it. Yeah. Why not? We want to explore. We're explorers. You know, we've been around. we got Siberia. <laughs> trying, <laughs> trying to explore like Siberia. That's like a, an alien planet all in itself. <laughs> I mean, that's the strangest place in the world. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I always found myself sympathizing because... Well, I've, I've met, a, through the course of doing it, I've met a lot of Russian people. Mm -hmm. You know who I sound like? I sound like when I speak Russian, Joseph Stalin. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, they're in communism. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's very strange, but they, they, the, uh, my coach, is, it's so eerie. You sound like Stalin. <laughs> Not that I like Stalin, I don't like him. <laughs> but he goes, Rakety, Rakety na ishkodnyu, bayvayu gatubnost. And it sounds, because he speaks like, he's got this low, sort of slow way of talking, you know. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going, okay, that's great. I sound like Stalin. Yes, well, that's wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> but all the, the Russian people I met, they're, they're so great. I mean, they're just lovely people. I, if I were you, I would ask My Michael Greenberg, why did you pick me to play the Russian again? <laughs> yeah, why did you pick me to play the Russian? <laughs> well, because you... Because you look like a Russian, and I said I don't look like it. It's the it's the eyebrows, isn't it? <laughs> uh, after uh, these episodes, have you developed a fondness for Russia in any respect? Well, I always have had uh, a, a fondness. I love the food. I love the um, I love some of the vodka. I love the music. Russian music is great. It's so soulful. It just, the, 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 especially their, their folk singers and that, their, their folk music, it's just, it's, it's amazing. And uh, my wife quite likes it. She, um, she uh, has uh, Russian or Polish relatives in her background. And uh, she was all keyed up about Russia. She actually went over there. I haven't been over there, but she went over there for a little while and she went to the, um, 
what's the name of the university? Woodbridge University in, in Vermont? It's where the State Department goes to learn languages. Mm. And she went there and took a course in Russian for a whole summer, a Russian intensive, where they, uh, that's where they send all their diplomats to, right. to learn how to speak the language. And uh, that's a tough language. Yeah. It has so many tenses and so on. So uh, when, uh, when I um, saw that and she was going to go over there, I thought, well, I'll go over too. But I didn't go because they don't have, that's the only thing I don't like about Russia is they don't have any golf courses. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's stupid, but they just don't have any. So I thought, what is the cultural advantage of going to Russia if you don't have a golf course? What the hell am I going to do? You know, go to the museum, the Amber Room, big deal. <laughs> go to the Hermitage, so what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but uh, no, I, uh, I know a lot of Russian guys and mm. gals, and they're just, uh, I find that in, in, in cultures where, where people are so used to dealing with less, and you, they're so used to, to um, difficulty that if they don't have difficulty, they're miserable. So they're only happy in their struggle, you know? And so I love their, their sayings. They go, what's it? It goes, it goes uh, life sucks, <laughs> but death isn't that hot either. <laughs> so you go, okay. That's my, the kind of people I like. My favorite Russian proverb is uh, a full stomach likes to preach about fasting. Yeah. So, yes. Which I can use. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, me too. Mm. <laughs> For this character, I don't think there was a greater move than allowing him to take command of the Korolev. After all these years, was it rewarding to take the captain's seat? You have no idea. I begged and pleaded. Really? Years ago. I said, please let me go through the gate. Yeah. I want to go through the gate. I love the gate. I just want to do that whoosh thing. Yeah. You know? But they never, they'd say, nope, you can't go. And I said, well, can I go to Atlantis? No, because you can't come back. Yeah. So, all right. All right, I won't. But we're giving you a spaceship. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> you what? <laughs> You're giving me a spaceship? The Core 11. I went, this is so cool. <laughs> awesome. And we go in there, and there's explosions and stuff going, and the thing is flying and we're yelling out orders and, and it's a great set. The Korolev is a beautiful ship. Well that whole set, have you ever been on the set there? Mm -hmm. The set is spectacular, you know. I just love it. And just the idea of sitting there, I, I always went, engage, walk back to one. <laughs> I just wanted to do that, just to see what it's like. Yeah. Just Engage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very excited about that. Last question. For anyone who hasn't read spoilers for season 10, we've been made to think that the Odyssey and the Korolev both had an equal chance of being the cruiser that was blown up mm -hmm. in Camelot. What can you tell us about Chekhov's fate? Chekhov's fate at this point in time is up in the air because we don't know when you look at the, the season finale and you see those massive explosions. We don't know who, who died and who didn't. We also uh, uh, don't know who the survivors are because they were survivors off, off the ships. Right. Well, surely, yeah. Yeah. And um, one, thing I could, one thing I could say, well, I can't die. Shanks is right beside me. <laughs> <laughs> Stay. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> or not Shanks. Uh, Michael Shanks. Uh, uh, ben is right beside me. Yeah. Can't kill Ben. He can't kill me. Right? <laughs> <laughs>